Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified auditor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic related to problem solving that is the third step root cause analysis and in this root cause analysis I am going to talk about three legged five analysis. Well, in general, in our day-to-day -day life, you all can see there are so many problems happening around us. As simple as that we are using a mobile and it's not working or maybe the network is not there. Or maybe we are having a headache. What to do about it? So, one immediate thing is that we find some easy solution, maybe taking a pill and then taking care of it. But then, at times we also find want to find out the real reason that why exactly my head is aching and then I take some actions based on the actual root cause. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about that. Well, in 1970s, Imasaki Imai from Toyota, he first, you know, identified this particular technique about five whys. Why, 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 why? Asking questions five times so that we can actually go to the real reason that why a problem is happening. And once we identify that particular problem, we can actually take the action. So you know that it's a series of seven steps which is going on wherein the first step was about defining the problem. The second step was about correction, containment and interim action. The third step for which I'm going to talk today is about root cause analysis using five whys and three layered approach. The fourth one is about implementation of corrective action. The fourth one is about effectiveness of evaluation that whether whatever actions that we have taken, whether it is effective or not. The sixth one is about horizontal deployment. And the last one is about documentation, lesson learned and the promotion of awareness that whatever actions that we have taken, whether they are effective or not. So in this particular video, specifically, I'm going to talk about root cause analysis. And in that root cause analysis, there are different techniques. One of the techniques is three like five Y. We all know about five Y. But then in five Y also, there are three different versions that we need to do if we do in that way then we can actually find the root cause in all the possible manners and then there are other ways also which is including ishikawa diagram or pdc approach and there can be many more things so specifically when we talk about 5y using the three leg approach again there are seven different questions if we ask then we can actually come to know the real problem and we can take the action on that the first question is with respect to that, what exactly is this three leg five way approach? So when we talk about three leg, the first leg is talking about the occurrence, that why this problem has actually happened. The second leg is talking about detection that, okay, the problem has happened, but then why it has not detected earlier and why it has gone to the customer. And the third leg, very, very important, is the systematic approach that, okay, the problem has occurred, but that what was the problem in the system which has resulted in this particular problem. So we are going to talk in detail about this particular thing, that what exactly it's all about. And then begins question number two, that why we should use the 5 way approach. And there can be many reasons for that. The first one is, it provides actually a roadmap to a permanent corrective action. Secondly, it helps the organization that problem should not repeat again. It leads to employee and satisfaction of the customer. And certainly, finally, most important, it increases the quality, profitability and the market share. Well, Edward Deming had said very rightly that 85% of the reasons for failures to meet the customer expectations are related to the deficiencies in the system and processes rather than the employees. That brings question number three, when to use three lakh five way approach? Well, there are three possible cases where we need to use this particular approach. One, when there is any customer issue. Second, when there is any issue with respect to the supplier. And the third one, when there is any internal issue, which is there and organization need to find a solution to that. Now that brings question number four, that what if we would not follow any systematic root cause approach, what is going to happen? So there are many possible issues or problems that can happen with respect to that. The first one is that it can lead to customer dissatisfaction. It can lead to some uncompetitive or non-conforming performance regularly. Certainly it's going to increase the cost of failure and it will lose to loss of business for the organization also and it may result in recalls and warranties. That brings question number five, a very permanent 
pertinent and very normal question that how many whys we need to ask whenever we are doing any root cause analysis. Well, so the first thing is that we need to ask five whys until we can uncover the actual root cause. Now, this five why is just a reference to it. We can actually go to a root cause maybe with less than five why or maybe we need more than five why. And the idea over is that unless and until we are asking sufficient number of questions with respect to why, there is a possibility that we end up correcting a symptom and not a root cause. And generally when we talk about root cause, it is generally related to a process, policy, design or a person. And there is always a possibility that there can be more than one root cause. Next, very important question, how to find out that whether we have identified our right root cause or not. So in this one very important thing is that in case we are talking about a root cause that it is related to a human failure, then 100% it is not the right root cause. Because first of all, human is not the actual reason for this problem. And whenever we talk about human as a problem, then the only root cause or in the corrective action that we follow is with respect to the retaining of that particular employee. But then when we are talking about that, we are not actually talking about any manufacturing issue and we are not going to the core of the root cause that why exactly it has happened. So that brings point number seven in the last question, we are actually now going to go in detail about the five analysis. So let's take a very simple example, very normal example that happens around us that you are driving a car and then there is a breakdown in the car. So let's do a normal five analysis to understand that why it can happen. So the problem is the vehicle is under breakdown. So the first why can be maybe the battery is dead. Now another question that comes after the second why is maybe the alternator is not working. The third why could be maybe it is because the alternator belt has broken down. The fourth belt is that belt has broken down because it is beyond its useful life and it has not been replaced. And the last and five, fifth why could be, well, the vehicle was not maintained according to the recommended service schedule, like every 12 months you need to do something and all that. Well, if you look into the picture, you will see that in general, most of the time we are looking into the symptom and we are taking action with respect to that. But actually, if we focus on the underlying causes, the root, which is actually below the surface, which is not very obvious, then at that time we can actually take the right action and that action can be very useful. Well, if you can see, when we talk about three like five way approach, uh, there are different kind of formats which our organization can use. So this is just one of the way in which we can do that. So if you see that we define the problem, and then there is a first one is with respect to the occurrence that why the problem has happened and then we can do five way with respect to that. And similarly for detection, the second leg and the third leg is with respect to the systemic hero that why this problem has happened. Now talking specifically with respect to the first leg that why the problem has actually occurred. Well, there can be many reasons but broadly if we see there can be three specific issues which can be that. The first one is with respect to any process. The second can be with respect to any product or part. And thirdly, it can be with respect to any tooling which may have resulted in that particular occurrence. So let's take one example. And that in that problem, we are talking about a breakdown. So why that breakdown has happened? So the first why is the loss of torque at rack inner tie red joint rod joint which has happened. Now why that has happened? Maybe because there is an underside chamfer which has resulted in that. But why that underside chamfer is there? Maybe because when we were doing the fitment at that time the, it, the part shifted actually that has resulted in that. Why that has happened? Maybe because there was insufficient radial clamping load which may have resulted in that. And why that has happened? It could be because of the air supply issue that air supply was not sufficient that may have resulted in that low clamping and why that air supply was insufficient the reason could be there can be different leaks and different other things which may have resulted in that so that is the final why and now we need to take action on that particular thing so that brings point number two the second leg when we are talking about detection that okay fine problem has happened but then why it was not detected why it has gone to the customer and there can be many different reasons for that. It can be maybe because the problem, there was no system with respect to that or maybe the controls that should have been there, they were not there. 
So let's take an example with respect to another 5 y with respect to detection that why the detection mechanism has failed. Well, so again taking the same thing loss of torque. Now why it was not detected because there was an underside chamfer and that was not detected that could have been the reason and why it happened because the inspection frequency is inadequate. Maybe say for example we may have decided that every 3 hours or every 4 hours we are going to check it but maybe that inspection frequency is not adequate. And then why it may have happened? Maybe because in case we are doing any process capability study, the CPK study and that does not result in reflecting any special cause with respect to that variation. Since it was not highlighted from that place, that could be the reason that it may not have been detected there. And there can be many different reasons also. This is just one of the example. So that brings third leg. We didn't talk about the systemic failure. So talking in detail about that, here we are talking with respect to maybe the failure mode that why it was not identified in the FMEA, maybe in the new product and process planning process it was not followed effectively or it could be that when we are identifying the failure mode with respect to the occurrence the risk was not identified properly or maybe it was not identified during the design phase that whether this kind of failure can happen or not. So talking about 5Y with respect to systemic. The first root cause again the first why is the loss of torque which we already talked about it then why it could happen maybe because there was an ineffective control plan related to the process parameter why it has happened maybe because there was a low severity for the chamfer in control in the FMEA that could be the another reason for that and why it has happened maybe because the dimension was not considered to be an important dimension and that's why there was no additional control that was defined and why that may have happened. Maybe again because of the insufficient evaluation of machining process which is related to severity level during the new product development process. So these are the different ways in which we can do 5Y. I have just given you just one example. There can be many different ways to do the 5Y but the most important thing is that when we are doing 5Y we need to look into three focus things. One is about that why that problem has occurred. The second thing is that if it has occurred why it was not detected and the third one is that what was a systemic failure which may have happened and there can be different type of formats which an organization can use with respect to that and which is more convenient to them and for which they feel comfortable to do that. And the one very important thing while doing the five analysis is that there should be a cross functional team approach from different processes and they need to work together as a team and only then they can actually find the real root cause and they can take the corrective action. So that brings the last question that what are the challenges that industry is facing with respect to root cause analysis. The first and the most important is more than 95% of the cases actually the organization is aware about the root cause. There is actually no need to do 5Y because in most of the cases we know that this is a problem but generally we don't action about that. The second important thing is that how often the organizations really feel that this 3 lakh 5 y approach is actually important or relevant for them or they really feel that it is a, a very good tool for them to do the analysis. And the third and the most important thing is that how often the organizations feel more comfortable in taking actions on the symptoms rather than on the root cause. So these are the three very common challenges. Well, so if I do a summary overall, I talked about 3 lakh 5 y approach. When I talk about 3 lakh, I talked about occurrence, detection and the systematic failure. Then I also asked many different pertinent questions that why this analysis is important, when this analysis should be done. If we do not do this particular analysis, what will happen? How to make sure that we are asking sufficient 5 y's? And how do we know that whatever final root cause is coming, whether it is correct or not? Well, my next video will again with, with respect to the root cause analysis and there I am going to talk about another technique with respect to the root cause analysis that is Ishikawa diagram. Sometimes we also call it fishbone diagram. Well, luckily I am getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectation. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand about this video in little bit more in detail, you find a link below. If you click that, you will find a blog there and there you can find this particular information in much more detail. And in case you are liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavyamangla.com. Thank you.